Hi, today let us discuss the glycolysis in easy way. How to remember the glycolysis in easy way? So glycolysis is a pathway where the glucose under aerobic conditions it is converted into pyruvate. Glucose is a C6 molecule where the pyruvate is a C3 molecule. So one molecule of the glucose is going to produce the two molecules of the pyruvate. So this is the glycolysis pathway. It involves the so many steps, but we can easily remember the glycolysis by logically studying the different steps in the glycolysis. For example, glucose is going to be converted to pyruvate. That means one molecule of the glucose is converted to two molecules of the pyruvate. It indicates that glucose is going to be split into two equal halves. In order to split into two equal halves, the glucose should be converted into a symmetrical molecule before the splitting. So first point we have to remember the glycolysis is that the glucose before splitting into the C3 molecule it is converted into a symmetrical molecule so that it gives the two equal halves. Similarly another important point is that the glycolysis involves totally 10 steps and among these uh, 10 steps in the, within the first 5 steps the glucose is going to be converted into C3 molecule. So the splitting of the molecule takes place within the first 5 steps. Similarly, third important point is that initially glycolysis requires a phosphorylation. This phosphorus group is going to be supplied in the form of ATP. So ATP is going to be consumed in the initial reactions. But later, in the last five steps, the phosphorus group is going to be removed. Among these last five steps, at few of the steps, ATP is going to be released. So in the first five steps, ATP is consumed. In the next five steps, ATP is going to be released. If we keep these points in our mind, we can easily remember the glycolysis and what are the steps involved in the glycolysis. So glucose to pyruvate. What is the structure of this glucose? This is the structure of the glucose and this glucose is going to be under aerobic conditions converted into pyruvate. So this is the structure of the pyruvate. You can see the pyruvate is a C3 carbon and having a carboxylic acid at the first portion and a ketone at the second portion. Similarly, glucose to lactate. Glucose under anaerobic conditions, it is going to be converted into lactate. Lactate is again the C3 molecule, but here at the second portion, it is having the hydroxyl group instead of the keto group. So simply lactate is a reduced form of the pyruvate. But lactate is going to be formed under anaerobic conditions only. Normally glycolysis takes place under aerobic conditions. So now we will discuss the glycolysis that is the aerobic uh, pathway where glucose is going to be converted to pyruvate. Now let us see how this glucose is going to be splitted. So this is the structure of the glucose which is in the cyclic form and we can represent this glucose in the acyclic form or open chain form like this. So this is the open chain form of the glucose. Whenever this open chain is going to be splitted into the two equal halves then it is going to give the pyruvate. And if we compare the half molecule of the glucose and the pyruvate what happens? In the glucose, at one of the half, you can observe aldehyde functional group is present. But in the pyruvate, it is hanging the carboxylic acid with the ads and alpha portion a keto group. So what are the pyruvate is hanging the alpha keto acid group. So here you can easily observe that the aldehyde functional group is going to be converted into carboxylic acid. Now this is the glucose and if you take the half part of the glucose and compare with the pyruvate, Two important chains are the aldehyde functional group is converted to carboxylic acid, that is the first step. And similarly, at the third carbon, it is converted to CH3. So these are the two important steps. So first step is nothing but the oxidation of the aldehyde. And second step is nothing but the removal of the hydroxyl group. And at the second carbon, it is converted to ketone, which is combined with the removal of the hydroxyl group. So here the two major changes are oxidation of the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid and removal of the hydroxyl group from the third position. So if we remember these two important steps, we can easily see how this pyruvate is going to be formed from the last five steps of the glycolysis. And another important point where the ATP is consumed in the glycolysis. The two important reactions where the glucose is coming to glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate is coming to fructose 1,6-biphosphate. These two steps require the ATP and they are going to consume the ATP. With these points in our mind, let us go with the different steps in the glycolysis and how easily we can remember all these steps in the glycolysis. Steps in the glycolysis can be classified into two phases. One is the preparatory phase and second is the payoff phase. 
the preparatory phase involves the conversion of the glucose to the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate where the c6 molecule is coming to c3 molecule and here it involves the totally five steps so step one to step five similarly pair phase in the pair phase the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which is going to be formed in the previous steps is going to be converted into pyruvate and again this payoff phase requires the five steps step six to the step ten so let us start with the first step step one glucose to the glucose six phosphate so this is the glucose and this glucose is going to be converted into glucose six phosphate what is the purpose of this reaction glucose is not a good reactant because the hydroxyl group is less reactive when this hydroxyl group is going to be converted into phosphate then this is highly reactive so that is the reason the glucose is going to be converted to glucose 6 phosphate and since this step involves the phosphorylation the enzyme involved is the kinase which is in hexokinase because glucose is in hexose otherwise specifically glucose can be converted by the enzyme glucokinase and this reaction is an endergogenic reaction that means it requires energy the energy is going to be supplied in the form of ATP where ATP is going to be converted to ADP and magnesium is going to be used as a cofactor so this is the first step where the ATP is going to be consumed now the phosphorylated glucose is somewhat more active and then it can lead the next steps in the glycolysis now this is a glucose and already we have seen the glucose is going to come to its phosphate form but if we want to split the glucose how it is possible the ring can be opened at the ether link A so at this position and uh, we can cut the ring at the other position so the ring can be split in this way now it gives a two parts and if we count the number of carbons in each part so this is one and this is two and on the other part again one two three and four now if we see that at one part we can observe the two carbons on the other part you can observe the four carbons that means when we want to split the glucose it will not give the two equal parts because the glucose is not a symmetrical molecule even if we try to split the molecule into the two C3 molecules, we will not get the equal halves. But if you take the case of fructose, in the fructose, if we are going to split the molecule like this, then we can get uh, two parts and here this is one, two and three and again here one, two and three. That means when we are going to split here on this side again three carbons, again on this side three carbons. So now the fructose is a symmetrical molecule. When it is going to be splitted, it gives the two equal halves as already we have seen earlier the glucose should be converted into a symmetrical molecule before the splitting so we can easily remember that the glucose as it is cannot proceed in the glycolysis but it should be converted to a symmetrical molecule like the fructose so that is the next step in the glycolysis so step two is the conversion of the glucose 6 phosphate to the fructose 6 phosphate so this is the glucose 6 phosphate and here we can observe the phosphate group this glucose 6 phosphate can be converted into fructose 6 phosphate and here you can observe the phosphate group is still present in the fructose so what happened that glucose is simply converted to fructose so this step is an isomerization reaction so the whatever the enzyme is the phosphohexo isomerase because glucose 6 phosphate is nothing but the phosphohexose and this is going to be isomerase so whatever the enzyme is the phosphohexo isomerase what is the next step so now we got the fructose 6 phosphate in the fructose 6 phosphate on this side we can observe the phosphate but if you see the on the other side no phosphate group is there that means fructose 6 phosphate is not completely symmetrical and not ready for the splitting so what is the next step is nothing but we have to add a phosphate group on the the other side of the ch2oh so that is the third step the conversion of the fructose 6 phosphate to the fructose 1 6 biphosphate so this is a fructose 6 phosphate so this is going to be converted to fructose 1 6 biphosphate and this reaction is going to be mediated by one of the enzyme pfk1 what is pfk1 pfk1 is the phosphofructokinase 1 pfk2 is also there in the other pathway so here the pfk1 is going to be involved where it is going to convert the fructose 6 phosphate to the fructose 1 6 biphosphate now here you can observe the two phosphate groups in the fructose 1 6 biphosphate how this extra phosphorus group is going to be supplied since this is a phosphorylation reaction again it requires the energy and energy is going to be supplied in the form of ATP where ATP is coming to ADP and again the magnesium acts as a cofactor so that is the step 3 where fructose 1 6 biphosphate is going to be formed 
now it is ready for splitting so let's go with the cutting of the cake so step 4 is the splitting so this is a fructose uh, 1 6 by phosphate and it can be splitted at these two positions on splitting the carbon on one side is going to be converted into ketone and carbon on the other side is converted into aldehyde and what are the phosphate groups that are present on the both side of this molecule are going to be carried with each part of the molecule and here what are this oxygen which is forming an ether bridge is converted to OH group and this splitting is done by the one of the enzyme aldolase so that the one of the part that is going to be formed is like this you can observe this phosphate group is present along with the CH2OH and this O is converted to OH group and this CHOH is converted to aldehyde so this is one part which can be flipped and it can be written like this so this is nothing but the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate similarly it can give the other part where this molecule is going to form and again you can observe the CH2OP molecule as it is and second carbon is coming to ketone and third one is present as the CH2OH so this is nothing but the dihydroxy stone phosphate in this way fructose 1 6 biphosphate is going to be split into two equal parts they are not equivalent but they are somewhat equal so one is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the one is the dihydroxy stone phosphate step 5 is the isomerization even here two C3 molecules are going to be formed but here only one is going to lead the story in the next steps so here dihydroxy acetone phosphate is going to be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and this is a simple isomerization reaction where the isomerase enzyme is going to be involved and because here the reactant is a phosphotriose so what are the enzyme is the phosphotriose isomerase so this is the step 5 or the last step in the preparatory phase in this way the glucose is coming to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate in the first five steps next one is the payoff phase so already we have seen that glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to pyruvate in the payoff phase so what happened here you can observe that the aldehyde which is there in the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is finally converted to carboxylic acid so one of the step involved is the oxidation similarly here ch2op which is present in the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted into CH3 that means here the hydroxyl group is going to be lost if you keep these two steps in your mind we can easily remember the next steps in the payoff phase so step 6 is the oxidation in the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate group the aldehyde is going to be oxidized to the carboxylic acid so here this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is undergoing the oxidation where it is going to form the molecule like this what is the name of this intermediate so when the glyceraldehyde aldehyde is going to be oxidized it produces the carboxylic acid so it produces the glycerate but here in this glycerate you can observe one of the phosphate group present uh, which is carried from the reactant but here another phosphate group is going to be newly added now this intermediate is having two phosphate groups so it is a 1 3 by phosphoglycerate so here the extra phosphorus group is going to be supplied from the inorganic phosphate and again what is the purpose of this phosphate group you can observe that this phosphate group is uh, linked within a curvy line which indicates it's a highly energetic when this phosphate group is going to be removed it releases the high energy which can bring many of the biochemical reactions possible and uh, because this is an oxidation reaction here what are the enzyme involved is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase because the reactant is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and what are the enzyme is the dehydrogenase so glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase what is the purpose of dehydrogenase dehydrogenase is the enzyme which removes the hydrogens and removal of the hydrogens is nothing but the oxidation so what happens to the hydrogens that are going to be removed here since the hydrogens are going to be removed in this reaction there should be a carrier to take these extra hydrogens so in this reaction NAD plus is going to be converted to NADH plus H plus which is going to carry the extra hydrogens so in this way at this step NADH is going to be formed which can couple with the respiratory chain to release the 2.5 ATP molecules what is the next step here the phosphate group is there which is not essential for us so it should be removed so that is the next step so step 7 is the removal of the phosphate group so from the 1 3 by phosphoglycerate the phosphate group is going to be removed so that it is going to form the 3 phosphoglycerate so this step 
where the phosphate group is going to be removed is mediated by a kinase enzyme that is a phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme. Again, what happens to the phosphate group which is going to be removed? So now this phosphate group is going to be released as the ATP molecule. So in this reaction, the uh, phosphate group is going to be removed as an ATP molecule and the presence of cofactor magnesium. So this is the first step in the glycolysis where the ATP is going to be released at the substrate level. Step 8. Shift of the phosphate. Now already we have seen that the two modifications should be done. Conversion of the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid. And second modification is the, the removal of the OH group from the third carbon. But here in this uh, three phosphoglycerate phosphate group is going to be attached at the third position. In order to remove the OH group, the phosphate group should not be there at the third position. So that's why this phosphate group is going to be shifted to the second position. So in this reaction, 3-phosphoglycerate is going to be converted into 2-phosphoglycerate. So in this reaction, the phosphorus group at the third position is going to be shifted to the second position. Since this reaction involves the mutation of the phosphate group, so here the enzyme is the mutase, which can be called as phosphoglycerate mutase. And now the OH group is ready to remove at the third position. So in the next step, the OH group is going to be removed as a water molecule. Step 9 is the loss of water. Now this is the 2-phosphoglycerate and here the hydrogen from the second carbon and OH group from the third carbon are going to be removed as the water molecule. And when this water molecule is going to be removed, it's going to form a double bond between the second and third carbon. So this is nothing but the phosphoenol pyruvate. This reaction is going to be mediated by one of the enzyme, enolase enzyme. Now what is the next step? Here everything is ready but phosphorus group is not required for us so the next step in was simply removal of this phosphate group step 10 removal of the phosphate so from the phosphoenol pyruvate this phosphorus group is going to be removed so that it is going to form the pyruvate and this pyruvate is present in a enol form now this step is going to be mediated by pyruvate kinase enzyme and here this phosphate group is going to be again removed as a atp molecule so again, this is the another step where the substrate level uh, phosphorylation is going to take place and ATP is going to be released. So now the pyruvate which is in the enol form is going to be randomly converted into keto form. So which is more stable compared with the enol form. So that is the last step in the glycolysis and we can see that uh, pyruvate is going to be formed. So in this way we can easily remember the 10 steps in the glycolysis. Now within the glycolysis, what are the irreversible steps? So here three important kinases are there like the glucokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. All these are the irreversible steps. Among these, the first two are involved in the preparatory phase and the last one is involved in the payoff phase. And the first two enzymes are going to consume the ATP and the last enzyme is going to release the ATP. Similarly, the turnover of ATP. And uh, in the glycolysis, we have seen that initially ATP is going to be consumed at the two steps like the glucokinase and phosphofructokinase. So two ATP molecules are going to be consumed. And ATP is going to be released in the payoff phase, particularly substrate level phosphorylation at pyruvate kinase enzyme as well as uh, phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme. Each step release one ATP molecule, but because the glucose is coming to two pyruvate molecules it should be multiplied by two so totally four atp molecules are going to be released similarly the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme is going to release the two nadh molecules so with each nadh 2.5 atp so totally five atp molecules are going to be released so if we calculate the total atp molecules that are going to be released by the glycolysis under aerobic conditions is the seven atp molecules so these are the various key points involved with the glycolysis hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends and post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching